So this one is about how to work up a prolonged PTT. That's a partial thromboplastin time. And this can be something that you can see pretty often. And you really want to address it because a prolonged PTT may tell you that there is a bleeding tendency, but it may not. You want to make sure that you have a definitive answer. This is usually a problem in patients who, for whatever reason, maybe they're undergoing surgery and it's an elective procedure and the morning of the procedure and it's like, oh, the PTT is prolonged. Oh, what do you make of that? We also see prolonged PTTs in the hospital as well, but we can see it a lot in the outpatient setting. And it's really important to evaluate because you want to make sure that you are not missing a significant tendency towards bleeding. All right. So how do you work it up? Well, one of the things you need to understand is that the PTT is only a piece of measuring the coagulation cascade. I said that C word. The coagulation cascade does give people a lot of headaches. In a future episode, we we'll talk a little bit about the coagulation cascade and how to think about it. And I think in general, you shouldn't memorize anything because really there's a lot of information and you should get the information you need at the time you need it. But the coagulation cascade is important because it helps us think about the different components of blood clotting. So I'm only going to talk about it today to the extent to which it helps us recognize how to evaluate a prolonged PTT. All right. There are three main components we think of when we traditionally talk about the coagulation cascade. One is the extrinsic pathway, which is primarily measured by the PT or the prothrombin time. The next is the intrinsic pathway, which is primarily measured by the APTT or the activated partial thromboplastin time, which we're talking about today. And then the third part is the common pathway, which is measured by both the PT and the PTT. Okay, so if you want to really understand why the PTT is prolonged, the very first thing you want to know is what is the PT? And it's like basic, absolute minimum testing that you need is to know what the PT is, okay? You cannot evaluate a prolonged PTT without knowing what the PT is. Okay, so the first step is to say, what is the prothrombin time? Because that helps you evaluate the extrinsic pathway while the PTT is really helping you evaluate the intrinsic pathway. Okay, so now the PT is normal, but the PTT is abnormal. That's really important because now you've isolated the problem to the intrinsic pathway and you can now eliminate all players in the extrinsic and the common pathway. Okay, so the extrinsic pathway typically involves factor seven and the common pathway involves factor 10, factor five, factor two, and fibrinogen. Okay, but on the intrinsic pathway, so if the PTT is prolonged and the PT is normal, it tells you that everything is happening really in the intrinsic pathway. Okay. And these are the factors you need to think about. Factor eight, factor nine, factor 11, factor 12, precalocrine, and high molecular weight kininogen. It's a lot to remember, but I'm going to try to simplify it for you. The three deficiencies in the intrinsic pathway that will cause you to bleed like stink are factor eight deficiency, factor nine deficiency, and factor 11 deficiency. Those are the three that really make you bleed. So if you have someone who has a prolonged PTT and they're bleeding like stink, okay, it's gonna be one of those more often than not. And so you really wanna know when you have a prolonged PTT, you've isolated it to the intrinsic pathway, and then you wanna know, so what factor is affected? But before you ask what factor is affected, you wanna do, Mixing studies, yes, mixing studies. Okay, how do we interpret mixing studies again? I will tell you how. All right, so in mixing studies, what you do is you take the patient sample, an equal parts patient sample, so that's the, the sample that has the prolonged PTT, and the sample that is known to have a normal PTT, right? So the sample that's known to have a normal PTT has normal amounts of clotting factors, usually. And the sample that has the patient with a prolonged PTT is there's a problem with that. You don't know what it is yet. And so you take equal parts patient sample with a prolonged PTT and equal parts normal sample that you know has a normal PTT and you mix them together, okay? So you're kind of putting half of one normal sample and a half of the patient's abnormal sample, okay? If the sample corrects, that means the PTT goes back to normal or is super close to normal, usually at least within three to five seconds of normal, then you can say that, okay, the PTT has corrected and what's likely to be present is deficiency. There's likely to be a deficiency of a clotting factor. Okay, if you mix these samples, patient and control, 
and the PTT does not correct to normal or within three to five seconds of normal, then what you have is likely to be an inhibitor, something blocking the function of the factor. Okay, that's important because it helps you figure out what you're going to do next. We're not gonna go into the diagnoses just yet. We're just gonna focus on the workup, okay? So first, you wanna make sure that you know what the PT is because it helps you decide whether you isolate it to the intrinsic pathway or you isolate it to the extrinsic pathway. And then next, you wanna do mixing studies. If the mixing studies show you deficiency, then you wanna check factors that are in the intrinsic pathway. You can choose whichever ones you want, but you definitely wanna get 11, eight and nine because those really tell you about the tendency towards bleeding. And if eight, nine and 11 are normal, then you can relax a little bit and take your time to send out testing for factor 12, precalocrine and high molecular weight kininogen because these are less likely to make the patient bleed. So factor 12 deficiency is less likely to cause bleeding. Factor precalocrine and high molecular weight kininogen don't cause bleeding at all. And so the, pro, the PTT is prolonged and you have the opportunity to send all these factors do. But if you could only send three, you want to send the ones that you're most concerned about that could prompt you to think that the person is bleeding. Okay. Now, what if the PTT mix doesn't correct? That tells you that there is an inhibitor. Number one, you may want to make sure that it's not a lupus anticoagulant, which it could be. So you could send a lupus anticoagulant panel, but then you also want to check for an inhibitor. So the most common cause of inhibitor causing a prolonged PTT is factor eight inhibitor. And so then you would want to check the factor levels and the lab can tell you if there is an inhibitor of factor eight present. You want to check the coagulation factors because if it's low, then that tells you which factor is being inhibited. And that allows you to make a diagnosis of a factor inhibitor disorder. Okay. That's if the PTT is prolonged by itself. Next time, I'm going to talk to you about when the PTT is prolonged and the PT is prolonged. Okay. I'll talk to you next time.